In this video I will show you how to solve a dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model or DSGE model. The key difference to other models is that there is some randomness in there so we need to add expectations. Let's start with the following model. The consumer maximizes expected utility. So that is maximize consumption and we have the sum from t equals 0 to infinity times beta t times expectation of u of c t. If it was not stochastic, you just wouldn't have the e, which signifies expectation here, but it would be the same model. Now we need to add a budget constraint, and let's add the following constraint where the consumer needs to choose between capital and consumption. So we have CT is plus KT plus one. So the consumer can choose between consuming today or having more capital tomorrow. And where does it get its income from? Well, from some production, which is a function of capital, plus the previous level of capital depreciate it. That is, we have the previous capital level minus some share of it depreciated. Now we need to specify this function because that's where the stochastic nature of the problem comes in. So let's say f of kt is equal to at kt to the alpha. So we have here this at which makes the whole thing stochastic because this AT is not deterministic. Meaning, I know AT in period T, but I don't know AT plus one. What comes tomorrow is random. I know the distribution. I know certain probabilities and values that this AT plus one can take, but I don't know the cert with certainty which of those values AT plus one will take. However, keep in mind that f of kt has this form. I will just ignore that to show that it's really, really similar to a non-stochastic problem. And then in the end, get back to this special form. Okay, let's set up the Lagrangian. Lagrangian is equal to the expectation. Let's take it all the way out. And now the first term is utility. So that will be the sum t equals zero to infinity beta t u and let's add another bracket u of c t that's the standard part and now we have our constraint which was minus lambda t times this equation here so let's have the Lagrange multiplied or lambda t and we have c t plus k t plus 1 minus f of k t minus 1 minus delta times kt. And we have this very long expression here for the Lagrangian. Okay, let's now take the first order conditions. Let's start with consumption, ct. Now, it only shows up here and here. So we simply get u prime of ct minus the lambda t equals zero. That's the same as in a non-stochastic problem. We would in theory have a beta t on both sides, but we cancel it out for convenience. And we would have the expectations, but as I said before, we assume that everything in period t is known with certainty. So this means if the time horizon is the same, so if this equation only has elements of period t, we can leave out the expectations. If we have elements of period t and t plus one, we need to put expectations around all elements for period t plus one. And we will see that when we take the derivative with respect to kt plus one. So that dl dk t plus one 
is equal to, okay, we start here, minus lambda t, and now we need to iterate everything forward, so we get, everywhere where it was t, we get t plus one, here we have now t plus two. And since there's a negative sign here, and the two terms here with a kt are also negative, we can have all positive signs. So we get plus, now we need to have a beta, because we now have beta t plus one here. So if we divide by beta t, we have a beta here, and we have this expectation, and we get lambda t plus one, times f prime k t plus one plus one minus delta equals zero. So we have this lambda from here and then we have this derivative here with respect to k t plus one and derivative of this expression here with respect to k t plus one. And the third one we need is with respect to lambda. So with respect to lambda t is simply ct plus kt plus one minus f of kt minus one minus delta kt equals zero, which is just this constraint. Note that I, uh, I flipped the signs here. So it will be actually negative for these two and positive for these. If you want to do second order conditions, you need to make sure the signs are right. Since I don't do second order conditions here because the functional form here is assumed to be okay, um, I just flipped it because it's equal to zero. Okay, we have three equations. Let's now get the Euler equation from these three. First, I'll erase, make some space. Okay, now let's start with combining these two because everywhere where there's lambda t and t plus one, I can replace it by u prime of ct. So I get u prime of ct is equal to beta times the expectation of u prime of ct plus one times f prime of k t plus one minus, sorry, plus one minus delta. And we have big bracket here. And this is our standard Euler equation. Often it is assumed that this u prime of c t plus one and this expression here to the right are independent. If the two are independent, then we can take the expectation of this term times the expectation of this term, which allows us to get much closer to the general Euler equation. So let's do that. And we get u prime of ct over beta e u prime of ct plus one is equal to the expectation of f prime kt plus one plus one minus delta. And we get this expression. Now we can further specify what this here is. So this is just a production function. We define the production function to be equal to uh, at times k to the alpha. We have here t plus one. So we get f of k t plus one is a t plus one times k t plus one to the alpha. And so f prime k t plus one is simply a t plus one times alpha k t plus one to the alpha minus one. This is often also referred to as the marginal product of capital in a standard production function and this will be equal to r t plus one, the return on capital. So what we get in this Euler equation is essentially the trade-off between current consumption and future consumption, 
discount of future consumption, is equal to the expected return on capital. So we have the return plus one, that's the gross return, minus depreciation. To show the solution to the entire model, we need now this equation, and we need the equation down here, the general constraint we had, and we can get two nice curves from these two equations where we can find the equilibrium. Thank you for watching.